Welcome back. Continuing in the local news, the Ministry of Health says that the refurbished mental health rehabilitation facility is meant to continue to be a site of temporary treatment and care in a manner akin to the treatment provided at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. During a ceremony address, the Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment Luke Brown, the Parliamentary Representative for East St. George, Camilla Gonzalez, the Senior Nursing Officer in Mental Health as well as a representative of the European Union was there at the ceremony to dedicate the treatment or refurbishment of the mental health rehabilitation facility. News of anticipation for many, the 2016 SVG Christmas Nine Mornings Festival will be officially launched this Sunday, the 11th of December from 6 p.m. at Heritage Square. The program will begin with a traditional lighted street parade featuring the police band, cadet corps band, Cyan Hill Euphonium Steel Orchestra. Expan, string bands, Rose Bank, Boom Drums, and Rose Hall Drummers. This will be followed by a community Christmas concert and the lighting of Heritage Square. During the parade, the various communities participating in the festival will vie for Best Community Parade and they will be judged on uniformity of costumes, use of traditional lights and music, quality of presentation, and size of content. The winning community will earn EC $2,000. A total of $5,000 in prizes were on Friday, December 2nd, distributed among a group of five lucky digital customers as part of the telecommunication company's Get Gifted Christmas promotion. The winners are Helsin Bergen of Beckway and Jay Jackson of Annesvale, Don Regis of Cyan Hill, Rhonda McNichols of Richland Park and Kenna Kittles also of Richland Park. The prize giving ceremony which was held at Court Limited SVG on Friday morning saw all the winners being invited to pick from a glass jar a ball containing the winning amount and was then given two minutes to pick up an item or items on their wish list for Christmas 2016 amounting to the value they would have picked. Among the items the winners walked away with were weed trimmers, microwaves, washing machine, toasters, pillows, and pot sets. Congratulations to all the winners. Ruth Learning and Carib Dreams were yesterday launched by Vincentian entrepreneurs Maurice John, Jamil John, and Misha Crookshank. The young entrepreneurs say, along with Carib Dreams, the newest real estate company on the island, they would also introduce for the first time in St. Vincent Ruth Learning, an educational platform aimed at improving literacy for learning and outcomes for students. The company in its release says that the platform is an engagement tool for use by students allowing teachers to track students' understanding and responsiveness while allowing administrators to manage the academic progress of students. The product, which is a breakthrough in education, is unique to St. Vincent and will introduce a se selected schools across the state during this period. To celebrate World AIDS Day, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment Luke Brown encouraged Vincentians to join in the fight against the disease. The eternal quest of mankind is to transmit a better world to each succeeding generation. Our success in that endeavor hinges to a large degree on our progress in fighting this disease. We see the light of eradication at the end of the tunnel. And it is precisely in a moment like this that we should press forward with a most determined final push. That is why we are here today on December 1st, World AIDS Day 2016. We dedicate ourselves to that final push that will end this scourge for all time and contribute to the liberation of our people in an important way. Onward march without delay is the call. And this is reflected in one of the themes which says, take the challenge, end AIDS. 
Let us simply take that challenge. According to epidemiologist Tamara Bob, some 1.2% of this nation's adult population is reported to be HIV positive. Speaking at a ceremony on Thursday where the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment launched activities for World AIDS Day, Ms. Bob said that they will continue to work to lower the number over the next five years. Meanwhile, Azona Vanlo, Deputy Director of the HIV AIDS Unit in the Ministry of Health, said that the issues of stigma and discrimination com continues to erode the gains made in the fight against HIV AIDS. According to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Simone Kiza Beach, progress is being made in reducing the spread of HIV and AIDS. Addressing a rally hosted by the Ministry of Health last week, Thursday, to mark World AIDS Day, Dr. Kiza Beach said that countries worldwide com are committed to end the HIV-AIDS epidemic by the year 2030 as part of the Sustainable Development Goals of the SDGs. The Chief Medical Officer noted that the number of new HIV infections is not declining among adults, with young women particularly at risk of becoming HIV positive. The World AIDS Day 2016 was observed under the theme, Hands Up for HIV Pre Prevention, Take the Challenge, End AIDS. Meanwhile, Minister of Transport and Works, Senator Julian Francis, says that the Argyle Bridge and, in, and its infrastructure are in place. No tech is moving some very big boulders up to the top to fix the main road. And there on that narrow piece of road going around to Mount Pleasant with seven or eight big trucks. So putting traffic through here while they're traveling is going to be chaos. So I'm fixing a small bypass road that the trucks can operate and the traffic can still operate. So and more news saddening the entire nation, Romano Jackson of Camden Park is now a patient at the Milton Keto Memorial Hospital after being shot last evening. Police in Lower Kettles confirmed the shooting incident which took place at around 7.45 p.m. and Jackson sustained a gunshot wound to the right side of his chest. We were also told from sources that Jackson, the driver of a minivan, was re re relieved sorry, on that day of all of his earnings. The incident reportedly took place in the vicinity of the Bethel High School in Camden Park. Police investigations are continuing. The man who viciously attacked his ex-lover last week was found dead on December 3, 2016, a short distance from the same area that he attacked his ex-lover allegedly. Dead is Renald Leslie Peters, known as Vince, a 51-year-old of St. Vincent and the Grenadines residing in Springgut in the British Virgin Islands. According to BVI Platinum News, the matter is being treated as a suspected suicide. Police had issued a wanted bulletin for Peters, who they said was a suspect in the apparent domestic abuse incident at Cabby Hill area, Easton, on November 28th. In the incident, a woman received severe wounds to her arms and body. The female victim, who is being treated at the hospital, was said to have been in critical condition but stable after the incident. We'll take a short commercial break and when we come back, Barbara Andrews has the sports news. Don't go anywhere.